One day during the summer vacation, all the students from Klasa of Hamanoa High School find themselves in an abandoned school building in the middle of a forest. Everyone goes into a panic after realizing that they have been abducted. The door seems jammed, so they cannot escape through it. Makoto, one of the students, breaks one of the windows in hopes of getting out, but the windows are protected by iron bars, so it goes in vain. He announces that he is the captain of the karate club, and he has trained for this very moment, so he will try to find a way to get through. One of his friends tells him to pay attention to his surroundings in a condemning tone. Makoto notices a piece of glass stuck in his forehead and a apologizes immediately. His friend advises him to calm down since they seem to be on a higher floor, so breaking windows is futile. Makoto proposes that they can all just jump out, and his friend instantly objects. He asks Makoto if he is even afraid of anything in this world since he is so muscle-headed. Makoto ponders the question as a girl bumps into his shoulder and passes by. The girl turns out, and accuses Makoto of bumping into her. She is Sadato Mareka, the daughter of a distinguished family with assets totaling 500 trillion yen, with the intelligence to place within the top ranks of the national mock exam. She is accomplished beyond her studies and even has a fan club within the school. He people secretly want to date her. She turns around with an indignant sigh and leaves. Makoto's friend praises her for staying calm at a time like this. Makoto hides behind him, eyeing Satom. His friend sees him doing that and teases him for being afraid of girls. Makoto clarifies that he cannot handle them because he talked to her briefly the other day and she gave him the cold shoulder. Overhearing him, Sayatom interrupts him and says that she does not even know his name for her to be talking to him. Makoto sulks at her reply and his friend comforts him. Right at that moment, two men barge open the door with weapons in their hands. One of them, wearing black shades, points his weapon towards the students and forbids them from moving. While all the students stand in shock, Makoto runs and tries to kick the man in the face. The man blocks his kick easily and applauds his fearlessness in fighting back. He declares that he will eliminate him and starts making his way towards Makoto when Saitome steps on his foot and he trips. Saitome threatens him that if he harms her, the Sayotome family will not let him off. All students are impressed by her boldness. The man with the glasses attacks Saitome with his weapon and purposely misses. He says that he will let her behavior slide this time. Time, but she should still get some sort of penalty. He states that she would be their first participant and escorts her out of the room. Makoto notices that she is shaking while she leaves the room. He realizes that Sao Tome protected him by interfering in the matter because he would have been the target otherwise. He does not understand why she would do that and prays for her safety. Suddenly, a voice comes out of the speaker in the classroom and announces that all the students have been brought here to participate in a game where they would have to risk their lives. In the broadcasting room, there are several men in black suits monitoring the students. It is revealed that the master of this game is Satomi Rika herself. The men in black are the butlers of the Satome household, who bribed the parents of students so they would allow the abduction of their kids. They turned an abandoned building into a game thanks to the Saotome family's fortune. Tuju, the man in black shades from before, praises Saotome for her acting. He asks whether it is essential to go that far. Saotome replies that it indeed is, and the whole game is created so she can start dating Makoto. According to the suspension bridge effect, when a man and woman are on a suspension bridge and feel fear, it is theorized that one's heart pounding from fear can be mistaken as love. So, if she uses this game as a suspension bridge and acts as a heroine as they clear the game together, he will surely fall in love with her. She has been keeping tabs on Makoto for so long that she knows everything about him now. She blushes beet red, thinking about her interaction with him earlier. Her heart was beating like crazy while she was talking rudely to him. Tuju remarks that everything would become easier if she just told him her feelings. Satome tells him that she becomes too nervous whenever she is around Makoto and always ends up being harsh on him. Tuju argues that there would still be better ways to date him than abducting students and making making them play the game. Sayatome counters that she cannot talk to him normally, so there is no other way, and Tuju gives Zims. He asks her what it is about Makoto that she likes so much. Satome gets shy hearing the question and pushes him into a nearby wall, calling him a pervert for asking such a question. Back in the classroom, a student snaps and tells the man appointed in the classroom that the students are not going to do as they say. 
He says that he doubts that they have the courage to eliminate them. The man points his weapon towards the student to scare him. The student does show signs of fear, but the man with the weapon is more scared than him in reality. The weapon in his hand is a fake because they are in charge of all children's safety. The one Tu Ju had was for demonstration purposes. Everyone else has fake weapons on them. He does not want to get found out because this can ruin the plan. In the other room, Satomi is screaming at her butlers to get going before students get too suspicious. All students get ordered to gather in the hallway. Tuju and Satotame appear there, with Satotome seeming like a hostage. Tuju announces that he needs someone to play the first game with Satotome and picks Makoto for it. The original plan is for Satomi to act like a damsel in distress, so Makoto saves her, but forced by habit, she acts cool in front of him and tells him not to risk his life over it. Tuju gets mad at her because if Makoto does not come with them, there would be no point in all the drama. However, Makoto does not listen to Sayotomi and decides to play the game to protect her. Satomi finds this very attractive. Tuju starts explaining the game. Makoto and Sayotomi have to avoid a rolling iron ball weighing two tons for 30 minutes. The game starts, and both of them start running. The iron ball is actually being controlled with a remote controller so that it does not actually run into them. Since Makoto does not know that, he tries his best to evade the ball and take Sayotomi's hand in his to run together. Sayotomi is over the moon after holding hands with Makoto because this was one of her objectives. She flushes and tries to hide her feelings from showing on her face. Makoto, on the other hand, is thinking about survival. Sayotome gets tired after running for some time, so she yells at Makoto to stop. She notices that her hand is sweaty and pulls it back towards her. Makoto is confused, but he tells her to keep running because the ball can catch up to them anytime. Meanwhile, the man controlling the ball tries to slow it down to give the students some time to rest, but instead makes a mistake and the ball starts rolling fast. It gets out of his control and starts following Satomi. Satomi starts running for her life while screaming on the walkie-talkie to get the problem fixed. She takes a turn so the ball goes in another direction, but it keeps following her. Tuju appears in front of the ball to protect Satomi. The ball crushes him in an instant and nears Satome. She thinks she is about to meet God when Makoto grabs her and pulls her out of the way of the ball. The ball slams into a wall while Satomi lies on the ground with Makoto hovering over her. Her face burns up at their position, and she mutters Makoto's name accidentally. Makoto inquires how she is using his name when she had said that she is not aware of it. She tries to cover up her mistake at first, but then decides that she should be honest for once and thank him for saving her life. She thanks him with an enticing face and he gets surprised seeing her like that. He brings his face closer to her when Tuju screaming Satomi's name appears there. He sees their position and tries to leave, but Makoto calls after him. He asks him why he is covered in blood and why he seemed worried just now. Satomi is mad at Tuju for interrupting her moment with Makoto. Tuju declares them as winners since the iron ball is broken. After clearing the game, Makoto returns to the classroom and meets up with his friend. His heart is beating and he cannot get Sayotomi's flushed face out of his mind. Satom also keeps thinking about their moment back there. Tuju makes the announcement that the first game is cleared and tomorrow they will have to play the game again. Sayotome believes that she should make the game safer because their lives actually got risked today. Tuju informs the students about their accommodations. He and his men have prepared rooms, all types of food, tablets, games, books, and whatever the students may like. The students are surprised that they are being provided with this many facilities. Someone even comments that this is better than being at home. While students get guided to the individual rooms that have been prepared for them, Makoto is appalled seeing his room. It is extraordinarily lavish and resembles a royal palace. In the next day, all the students gather in an empty classroom. He talks about rooms with his friends, and they all tell him that they seemed like normal hotel rooms. Makoto wonders if his room is the only luxurious one and why. The room was actually designed by Satomi. It has a private bath, a toilet, soundproof walls, and even the real Mona Lisa. She had put that up because of an imaginary argument she had with Makoto in her mind. She appears in the classroom and greets Makoto. Makoto greets her back, and they chat a little about the game. Makoto's friend is surprised to see them talking so casually. He asks Makoto if something happened yesterday that made them close, and Makoto and Siotomi both think back to the specific intimate moment. Sarotome coldly answers that nothing happened and leaves. The speaker buzzes suddenly, and a man starts talking. 
Saotome's objective today is to make Makoto more conscious of her. The man explains that the next game is about finding a hidden bomb. The students have to find it and disarm it in an hour. If they fail to do it, the bomb will level the whole building. The game makers have moved to a safe place just in case. The students go into a panic and start running in different directions to find the bomb. The bomb is a fake and tied to Saotomum in reality. She plans to be alone with Makoto and pretend to find the bomb. When people are pushed to the limit, their desires come out and according to Satome's delusion, Makoto will express love to her while trying to deactivate the bomb. She runs after him to execute her plan, but he is too fast for her. Back in the broadcasting room, the butlers are resting. After searching for the bomb in many hallways, Makoto deduces that it might be hidden in one of the rooms. His room is the only one that is oddly lavish, and he finds it suspicious. He enters his room and starts searching the drawers. Sayatome follows him into the room, looking absolutely exhausted. Makoto asks her why she is here, and she composes herself to say that she found the room suspicious too, when in reality, she was shamelessly running after Makoto. She locks the door so no one interferes with her plan, and they both start looking for the explosive. She gets under the bed and pretends she found it there. She is unsure which wires are to be cut for deactivation, but it is a fake, so it should not matter. She quietly calls Tuju and asks him what the deal is with wires being black and white. She asks if she can cut any of them since it is fake anyway. Tuju suddenly gets hit with a realization and tells her that the bomb is real. They could not let Makoto find out they were using a cheap fake, so they bought a real one. Since it will get disarmed anyway, a real one should be fine. Sadomi's whole body starts sweating after hearing this. If she cuts the wrong wire, the bomb will actually explode now. Tuju apologizes to Satomi for buying a real bomb instead of a fake one. He reasons that he has been tired lately, so he ended up committing this unforgivable mistake. Two of the butlers barge out of the broadcasting room, screaming for Satomi. They have to get her to a safe place quickly. They start running like crazy and almost bump into two students. The students wonder how they are there when they are supposed to be in a safe place. The butlers reach Makoto's room, but it is locked. Their banging on the door is not working either since the room is soundproof. They realize with dread that they have left the room key behind, too. They dash back to the broadcasting room to get the keys, meeting those students again on the way. Inside the room, Makoto and Satome are wondering which wire should be cut. Saratome states that she will make the cut and that Makoto should go somewhere far where he will have some chance of surviving. She feels awful for starting this game and putting Makoto in real danger. She believes that she should take responsibility for this. Makoto pats her on the shoulder and takes the cutter from her hands. He declares that he would not let everyone's fate weigh on Satome's shoulders. He will make the cut so whatever happens will be on his hands. Sayotome finds this very heartwarming. She grabs the cutter from one end and states that she would not let Makoto bear this responsibility alone. She will cut it with him. Makoto thanks her and they both decide to cut the black wire. Their hearts beat loud as they bring the cutter near to the wire. They cut the wire, but the timer on the bomb does not stop. With only four seconds left, Makoto holds Saotome in his arms and lies down on the bed, protecting Saotome with his body. He knows that it will be pointless against a bomb, but he has to try to protect her anyway. Saotome flushes, feeling his whole body against herself. The timer ends, but nothing happens. Makoto realizes that they have been spared and heaves a sigh of relief. Satomi, on the other hand, is holding onto his body tightly and not letting go. Her heart is throbbing, and she cannot think of anything except being in Makoto's arms. He respectfully asks her to release him. She lets him go instantly, realizing her mistake. Makoto says thanks to her for being here with him because it was reassuring. Sadatome turns on her cold mode and says she would have been fine without him. Back in the broadcasting room, it is revealed that the bomb was actually fake, and Tuju lied to Sayotome. His companions complain to him about keeping them out of the loop and making them scared. He reasons that deception starts with allies. He thought that for this game, it would be better for Satoni to be frightened too. Or with them both being nervous, they would be more aware of each other. Sadami appears beside Tuju and punches him while yelling, God job punch. She scolds him and thanks him in the same breath. Tuju does not understand if she is thrilled or pissed. Back in Makoto's room, he also keeps thinking about his time with Sao Tomi in his room. 
Tuju, looking ragged after getting beaten, asks Sayatome about the next game. She brings out a swimsuit and says that this will make him more flustered. Makoto is having dinner with his friend at the cafeteria. They wonder why the game admins are being so hospitable. They have everything available, and the food is delicious too. The food is made by world-class chefs employed by the Satoon family, so obviously it will be tasty. Everything is nutritionally balanced with the goal of nurturing the growth of young students. Makoto comments that it has been quite a few days since the last game. Sarumpyom appears in the cafeteria with her food tray and overhears Makoto. She seems smug because there is a game today and an adoptious one. It took days to get the game ready, so she is confident. But for now, she wants to sit with Makoto and eat dinner. She paces back and forth, trying to approach Makoto. But in the end, she chickens out and sits at a nearby table. She fails to make the first move again, but she is determined to make him more aware of her in today's game. She is immersed in her thoughts when she sees a girl approach Makoto. Makoto greets her, and she asks him if he will be free to play soccer with her later. He agrees instantly, and the girl sits down next to him. She asks him to give her a bite, and he feeds her. Theotomi is shocked at the scene in front of her. She is seething with jealousy and anger. She wonders what they are to each other. Makoto's friend comments on them being so close, even for childhood friends, and she is appalled. Nagahama Chihiro has been living in Makoto's neighborhood since the second grade of school. They have been hanging out since. She is an energetic girl who plays with boys often. Her friendliness often gets mistaken as romantic feelings by boys. In school, she is part of the soccer, basketball, and swimming clubs. She is popular among other athletes of the school. Satomi tries to convince herself that being childhood friends does not mean much, and it is fine as long as they do not see each other romantically. Meanwhile, Chihiro answers Makoto's friend that she knows everything about Makoto and they have even taken baths together. Makoto comments that they only did that when they were kids. Satomi's world slips from under her feet. She cannot believe that she has never even had a peek at Makoto's body, while this girl has seen it all, she has become an enemy of Sayotomi. Saromi rarely takes an interest in people, to the point that she does not even know her classmates' names. She only focuses on Makoto, but she has now memorized Chihiro's name. Chihiro has been registered as a clear and present danger in Satome's mind. Right as soon as the students finish eating dinner, one of the butlers enters the cafeteria. He brings out a roulette wheel and announces that he will decide five participants by this method. All students start praying that they do not get chosen. The butler has a special controller to stop the wheel at Sayotome and Makoto. The other three contestants will be random. Sarumi realizes that Shihiro can be picked by this method too. If she had known about her before, she would have handpicked every participant herself. She dreads that Shihiro will stick to Makoto all the time if she gets picked. She is praying for her not to get picked but fate has different ideas. Chihiro was chosen as the last participant of the game. Satome is upset by the result, but she is still hopeful that her plan will work. The butler informs the participants that they will have to change into swimsuits. In the girls' locker room, Sayotome and Chihiro are changing into swimsuits. Chihiro questions the purpose of wearing swimsuits. According to Satome's scheme, she will entice Makoto by wearing a risk swimsuit. She sheds off her clothes and takes a peek at Chihiro. Chihiro notices her looking and goes to Sayotomi and pats her on the shoulder, joking about Sayotome staring a little too much, even though they are both girls. Satomi is a little weirded out by sudden physical contact. She wonders how Chihiro can stay upbeat at this time. Chihiro tells Sayotomi to cheer up since she is not alone. She opens up that she is a little scared too, but she believes everything will be okay if everyone works together. She cringes at herself for acting vulnerable and heads out first. Sayatome is left pondering if Chihiro is a good person after all, but she reminds herself that she is her enemy. She changes to her swimsuit, which is prepared extra small for her. She is excited to catch Makoto's attention. Chihiro arrives at the classroom where everyone is gathered, the boys have changed into swimsuits, too. Makoto wonders why they have been summoned to a classroom when it would make more sense to go to a beach or pool, given their condition. Makoto asks about Satomi from Chihiro. And right then, Satomi appears dressed in an oversized dress shirt and looking extremely shy. Tuju sees her on the screen in the broadcasting room and screams. 
He is pissed off that Satomi did not abide by the plan and calls her an idiot. He composes himself and presses a button, which makes water flow out of a pipe in the classroom. While everyone is thinking about the water, Seotomi is bent on making Makoto notice her. In this game, they have to escape by entering the right password on the keypad by the door. There are quizzes hidden around the room, and the answers to those quizzes make up the password. The longer it takes to find the right password, the more water will be filled in the room, making it harder to move around. It would take only 30 minutes for the room to get fully submerged. Once the explanation is over, one of the boys instantly starts looking for quizzes. Makoto suggests that they just break the door instead. His friend rebukes him for always being hot-headed. He complains about it to Chihiro, and Chihiro supports Makoto's plan. Saatome tells them all to calm and look for the quizzes. She finds one and solves it right away. She reassures everyone that they can win this if everyone calmly works together. Makoto realizes that she is right. Actually, Saatome knows where all the quizzes are hidden and she knows the answers to all of them. But she will save clearing this game for last. When the classroom floods and Makoto feels danger, she will entice him with her body. She will put the password at the very end to make her impression skyrocket. Makoto finds a quiz and asks Satome the answer since he does not know it. Satome purposely gets near him to look at the quiz and touches her leg to his. Suddenly, Chihiro calls for Makoto and informs them that she has found a quiz too, but it is out of her reach. She suggests she ride on Makoto's shoulder to reach it. Satom is shocked to hear a suggestion like this. She thinks Chihiro is shameless for proposing something like this. She has no sense of distance when it comes to boys and even boys treat her like she is one of them. She thinks that women like her are the most dangerous. But they shake men's hearts, and when men confess, they act clueless. She is a demon in Satome's eyes. Chihiro gets on Makoto's shoulder and retrieves the quiz. Satom forces herself to bear it till the time comes. When the room is mainly filled with water and all quizzes have been collected, Sayotomi gets a chance to get close to Makoto. She wonders if he is conscious of her. She sees the opportunity and announces the right passcode. Other students ask her how she knows it, and she answers that she has been mulling over it all this time and finally got it. She gets inside the water and swims to the keypad to enter the code. Right when she is about to input the code, she gets a painful cramp in her leg. It hurts so much and she cannot breathe either. She is almost about to faint and calls for Makoto's help when Chihiro appears and holds her. Makoto arrives there too and enters the passcode. The water flows out of the room and they are all saved. Satomi sits up after catching her breath. Chihiro scolds her for risking her life to enter the passcode when she is unathletic and awful at swimming. She worried them back there. Sayatome is confused and asks her why she is worried when they have never talked before today. Shihiro states that they are friends, so obviously she would be worried. Sayatome is puzzled at first, but then realizes that Chihiro is just a friendly person in nature and treats everyone as a friend. She gives Chihiro a heartwarming smile and thanks her for saving her. Tuju is surprised to see Satomi like this through the screen. Satom thinks that there was no reason for her to be so mindful of Chihiro because she treats everyone the same regardless of gender. Chihiro hugs Makoto in celebration and Satomi changes her mind again in an instant. Two days have passed since the last game. There have been no games, so the students have been left to their own devices. Satotomi is at the cafeteria, thinking of ways to approach Makoto. Chihiro calls her suddenly and invites her to eat at her table. Makoto is sitting there too, so Saotome happily complies and goes to sit there. This is her first time eating with a classmate, so it feels nice. Chihiro asks her if she would like to have a pajama party with her, Makoto, and another friend. Saotomi is surprised at the offer. She thinks about how shameless Chihiro must be to suggest spending a night with Makoto in a bedroom easily. Saotomi had to come up with a death game to even talk to Makoto, but Chihiro does everything so effortlessly. Saotomi ponders for a while and refuses. She has always been a sheltered girl, so her getting friendly with classmates all of a sudden will be strange. She apologizes to Shiro for declining her invitation. Chihiro accepts her answer and moves on to talk about the pajama night with Makoto and his friend. She talks about sleeping with them and Saotome listens to the conversation. She changes her mind and decides to go with the pajama party after all. 
In the broadcast room, a butler informs Tuju about the pajama party. Sadotome comes out of a changing room wearing a lavish black dress. As she is about to leave the broadcast room, Tuju stops her in her tracks and asks her if she is going to a pajama party or a marriage party. He tells her to change because she looks weird wearing a formal dress. She changes into several outfits, but none of them fit the theme. Tuju gets seriously pissed that she does not wear pajamas when it is supposed to be a pajama party. He explains to her that pajama parties are a chance to show one's cute and casual side. Instead of wearing fashionable and stylish clothes, one should try to appear slovenly for extra points. He advises her to wear her regular pajamas, but Sato refuses. Tuju gets furious and orders to strip or else he will forcibly make her age. Saitome gets scared and gives in. Sato meets with Makoto and his friend in the hallway. She is in her usual pajamas, which expose a little bit of her cleavage. She feels a bit shy and itchy, appearing like this in front of Makoto. Shihiro joins in in a while, and she is wearing a crop top with shorts. Saitome is enraged, seeing her belly button exposed. She worries that she will not stand out now and decides to cut Tuju's pay. Chihiro calls her pajamas cute and asks Makoto for confirmation. Makoto agrees with Chihiro and admits that they are cute. Sayatomi becomes elated and mentally, says thanks to Tuju, exactly the opposite of what she was thinking a minute before. Meanwhile, Tuju is in the broadcast room complaining about her being stubborn. As the group walks towards a room, Satomi becomes conscious of the fact that this is the first time she is going to be together with Makoto outside the game. She wonders if she will even be able to talk to him without the game to rely on. The group goes to Makoto's friend Umi's room for the hangout. Yumi brings out snacks and drinks, saying that he made use of the freedom the game admins gave them. Tuju is monitoring them from the broadcast room. Saotome asks what is usually done on pajama nights. She thinks about QA, but she already knows everything about Makoto. So this game would be boring for her. Umi laughs and replies that there has to be love talk when it comes to pajama parties. He suddenly asks Makoto if there is anyone he likes. Sadotome gets on alert instantly because that is the only thing about Makoto that she does not know. Makoto outright says no, and Yumi calls him boring. Sadotome is disappointed at first at his answer, but then realizes that it means she has no love rivals. She can make him more conscious of herself and make a place in his heart. Ami explains that it does not specifically have to be someone you like, but perhaps someone you are curious about. He tells Makoto to utter a single letter at least. Satom listens closely, wanting him to mutter her name initials, but he says nothing. She gets upset and wonders if she will have to make the games harder from now on. Next is Chihiro's turn. She says that she had someone in the past, but does not elaborate. Saotome gets curious if it was Makoto. Umi forces Chihiro to tell them, and she blurts out that it was a preschool teacher. Satome heaves a sigh of relief. Next is Yumi's turn, and he says that he only cares about his wife. Satome is surprised knowing he has a wife. Makoto scoffs that he had a different wife before. Satome cannot digest that information. He always looked harmless, so she is surprised to know that he is a playboy. Makoto sees the confusion on Sayotome's face and clarifies that Yumi is talking about anime. Her brain stops working for a moment, and she inquires how to register the marriage. Umi Samari apologizes to her for causing confusion and tells her that he has no one. So he named an anime character. Sarato Mine finally understands now and refers to Umi as Kawa. Umi means Sien Kawa means river, so she got the names mixed because both are water bodies. Makoto Chihiro and Yumi laugh at her for this cute blunder. Saotomi gets embarrassed and defends herself by saying that she got his name mixed up because it has to do with fluids. Chihiro takes the joke one step ahead and calls Umi Mizu, which means water. Satomi's laugh slips out from her, but she quickly composes herself. Noticing her laugh, Chihiro calls Umi Sora, which means sky, and it gets a laugh out of Sayatome again. Sayatomi states that she has learned his name now. She deliberately says the wrong name again to tease Yumi more. Makoto notices Sayotomi wholeheartedly laughing and comments that this is a new side of her. Satomi gets nervous because of the sudden comment, and her hand accidentally knocks a drink nearby. She immediately apologizes, and the others say that it is okay. However, she keeps apologizing to the point that she blurts out that this is not like her. 
The behavior she has exhibited is unbefitting of a member of the Sayotome family. She continues that this was the first time she talked so much with her classmates and must reform herself. She has a horrified expression while saying that. Listening to her, Umi punches Makoto and orders him to apologize to Sayotome. Makoto does so and clears up that he did not mean it badly. She always seemed cold to everyone, so seeing her laugh like that was different. Rather, it felt good. As soon as she listens to Makoto's words, her mood lightens up. Even Umi notices the sudden switch up. Tuju in the broadcast room is watching all of it with a smile on his face. He remarks that this death game is having an unintended effect on Satomi. He looks at Satomi's beaming face and recalls the young Satomi, who used to be cold and gloomy. It warms his heart, looking at her being happy now. It is already 2 am, but Shihiro and Umi do not want to call it a night. They are still joking around and teasing Makoto. Satome wants to go to the bathroom, so she leaves the room. The hallway is very dark, and the bathroom is at the end of it. Sayotome is a little scared, so she decides to call Tuju on the radio. Suddenly, Makoto appears behind her and startles her. He offers to go along with her to the bathroom, since it is dark and dangerous. In the broadcast room, a butler calls Tuju to show him Sayotome and Makoto on a monitor. He is surprised to see those two alone in front of the bathroom. Satome says thanks to Makoto for waiting for him. They start walking back to the room. Satome thinks that the scary school building feels pleasant right now. She wonders why that is, but one look at Makoto gives her the answer. Tuju and the butlers in the broadcast room comment that they have a good atmosphere going. He wants the Satome to make some progress already because her plan of games gave her the perfect opportunity to talk to him more. In the hallway, Makoto asks her why she decided to join them when she had declined at first. The butlers in the broadcast room monitoring this all want her to say something sweet in response to that. But, forced by habit, Sayotomi turns on her cold persona and answers that she just wanted to see how commoners live as she lives in a completely different world than Makoto and his friends. The butlers facepalm themselves at that. Makoto walks a little ahead of Sayotome while returning, and Sayotome calls Tuju. She nervously whispers that she is alone with Makoto, but has no idea what to talk about with him. She dreads that they will make it back to the room before she gets to do anything, instead of giving her advice. Tujo refuses. He states that the reason why she has not been able to get close to him so far is because she is never honest with him, even leaving aside love-related things. She has to fix this problem in general. He says that his guidance will be hopeless if her behavior does not change. He believes that Makoto will accept her feelings if she is honest with him about them. He turns off the communication and monitors so Sayotome can do something on her own. Satomi gets anxious and threatens to cut his pay. But Tuju ends the call. Tuju knows that he probably will not get any pay this month, but he wants Sayotome to make some advancement already. So this is necessary. He hopes that she can do something today. After the call with Tuju, Satome says nothing till they reach the room. When they spot the room, Satome realizes that her time is almost up. She is in distress that she has not been able to do anything. She wants to be alone with Makoto for longer. Tuju's words about her being honest ring in her head. Just as Makoto is about to open the door, Satome stops him with a hand on his arm. She is extremely flustered but manages to say that she does not want to go back yet. Makoto is confused and asks why she doesn't want to go back. Sayatom retrieves her hand in a quick motion and ends up blurting that she wants to go to the bathroom as an excuse. Makoto replies that they were just there. Sayatomi is cursing Tuju in her head for leaving her to deal with this alone. If she could be honest with her feelings, she would not have made this game in the first place. But she really wants to tell him how happy she has been recently. She gulps and finally says that she was happy. Makoto is even more confused and says that going to the bathroom with her is no big deal. Sadami clarifies that she is answering the question he had asked earlier. She had told him a lie. He asks what was the real reason then. Satomi cannot say that she joined them just because Makoto was there, but she can say something else. She tells him that she was happy when she was invited to play with them. She had never interacted with her classmates before, but still, they all took her in. She firmly states that she had a lot of fun playing with them and thanks him. Makoto replies that he had fun with a friend too, referring to Satomi. He believes that Shihiro and Yumi feel the same. Satotome smiles brightly at that. It is getting late, so Makoto tells her to call it a night. But right at that moment, 
he hears fireworks nearby. Both of them get startled by them. Chihiro bursts out of the room immediately, pushing Makoto aside. She smiles on seeing the fireworks and suggests going to the roof to have a proper look at them. Makoto protests because they might get caught by the men in black. Chihiro reasons that they are not escaping. They will just see the fireworks and return. Makoto still thinks that it is dangerous, but Yumi is on board with the idea. He grabs drinks and comments that the admins are strangely kind, so they will not say anything. Ikoto gives in and invites Sayatome to go with them. Sayatome's eyes sparkle, and she heads to the roof with them. They all watch the fireworks happily, but Makoto thinks about Sayatomi. She is always composed and does not involve herself with others. Turning to look at her, who is smiling in awe at the fireworks, he thinks that he was able to see a little bit of her real self today. Outside the school, Tuju is sitting in the heat, lighting up fireworks. He had decided not to help her but still ended up doing this. He just hopes that she is enjoying this. With happiness spread all around, Sarotome's long night finally comes to an end. The admins get up early to make preparations for the next game. One of the butlers has prepared red rice because Sadomi wanted to celebrate going from acquaintance to friend in Makoto's eyes. She happily munches on the food while Tuju has a discussion with the butler. To get Sayotome and Makoto together, all the butlers are giving their full power. No matter how unreasonable the demand is, they will fulfill their master's wishes. That is the butler's duty. As in today's death game, Students get called outside for the first time since they were brought to the school. They choose the participants with a roulette like the last time. One of the scared students, who has never participated in a game before, asks Makoto for tips. He assumes they will have to do some physical activities because they have been brought outside and gotten changed into their gym clothes. He tells her to limber up just in case. He advises Satome to stay close to her so that he can protect her. Sadotome blushes at that, but keeps herself composed. Tuju, monitoring them from nearby, waits for their conversation to end and announces the start of the game. He states that this is the most dangerous game till now and takes off the cloth of an object nearby to reveal a tiger in a cage. Everyone gets startled seeing the tiger. The challenge is to avoid this beast for 10 minutes. Tuju opens the door and the tiger comes outside. All the students start running in different directions in a panic. One of the students is sleeping amidst all this, and his friend threatens to leave him there to get eaten. The tiger is actually just a costume commissioned by the Satomi family. It was created by the world-class doll maker, Uhira Ryugen. He is so good at his craft that no one can differentiate between his dolls and the real things. Satomi family butlers went through a lot to get their hands on a tiger costume. The butler wearing the costume wants to make their plan successful at any rate because the doll maker had worked tirelessly to make this tiger appear real. Of course, he has no actual way to eat the students, so he will just have to stall the time. He pretends to look in the opposite direction so the students near him can escape. Some of them hide in a storehouse. The tiger gives them some time to hide and then enters the room to scare them. All students are poorly hidden and can clearly be seen by anyone. It is pissing the tiger off because these guys are acting like they want to be eaten. One of them is in a deep sleep, completely exposed. The tiger just turns around, leaving the room because he cannot do anything here. Beast and Makoto and Siotome are together, trying to run away from the beast. Siotome informs Makoto that she has sprained her ankle and cannot run any longer. This is all just her plan to get him to princess carry her. Beast when she thinks this plan cannot fail, Makoto carries her on his back to help her. She gets frustrated that her plan is already off to a bad start. At least she is still stuck to him, but this position is not romantic at all. She convinces herself to be satisfied with it because she is having a physical connection with him. However, she starts sweating after a while and becomes embarrassed. She unconsciously pushes Makoto a little away because she thinks guys do not like sweat-soaked girls. However, Makoto just tells her to hold on tighter and even tells her to wrap her arms around his front. When she does as told, Makoto feels her front against his back and gets flustered. Right then, the beast, the one in charge of setting the suspension bridge effect, appears. He turnears them while Makoto and Sayotomi are stuck at their place. After a moment, Makoto puts Sayotomi down and decides to fight off the tiger. He reasons that he will be fine as long as he does not get bitten. 
He cracks his knuckles while giving the tiger a death glare. The tiger's jaw drops at his recklessness. He cannot believe that Makoto is seriously planning to fight it. He has even taken a fighting stance. Sarutome is in a daze, looking at Makoto, so counting on her to stop him is useless. Makoto charges at it and tries to attack it with a punch. The tiger makes a run for it. Originally, in this game, the students were supposed to hide from the tiger. But now, the tiger is the one fleeing. The tiger hides behind a wall cowardly, so he loses Makoto. After it is gone, he turns to Saotome and declares that she is safe. She is mesmerized seeing him act so bravely. The tiger makes its way to Tuju. The man in the costume apologizes to Tuju for being a coward. He's ashamed that he got a legendary doll maker to work on it just for the plan to fail. Tuju decides to take matters into his own hands and switches the outfit with the other butler. Tuju, in the tiger costume, heads toward Makoto and Saotome. Both of them notice his appearance and turn to look at him. The only thing on Tuju's mind is to corner Makoto and send him into the pit of despair. He knows that he is strong, so he will not hold back. Makoto looks at him like he has seen a ghost. In reality, he is seeing a standing tiger. He blankly looks at it, wondering if it is possible for tigers to stand. He comes out of his trance in a moment and tries to hit the tiger, but it dodges his attack. Makoto notices the difference in aura and power between the current and the previous tiger. He is impressed by its fighting style. He does not think much and charges at it again. Both Makoto and the tiger have a hand-on-hand -hand fight. Tuju has a hard time keeping up because of the heavy and hot costume. He does not want to lose for the sake of the game and Sao Tome. He takes a quick glance at her and notes that she is rooting for Makoto. He gets pissed that she has lost sight of her goal and is blindly cheering for Makoto. At this point, the plan is a failure and to elicit the suspension bridge effect, something else needs to be done. He is lost in his thoughts when Makoto comes at him and lands a punch directly to his face. The punch sends him flying. He does not want to give up yet, but realizes that fighting is no good if Saotome does not want him to win. She even shouts at Makoto to finish the tiger off and go for its eyes. Tuju just gives up after that and accepts defeat. Makoto is declared the winner of the game. In the broadcast room after the game, Sayotomi is happily spinning on a chair. Still enchanted by Makoto, the butlers are discussing today's failure. They prepared so much for it to result in nothing, but they take a look at Satomi's blissful face and forget everything. They are just satisfied that their young lady is smiling. Tuju enters the room, still wearing the costume. Sayotomi greets him and brags about Makoto being strong right away. Tuju gives her a deadly glare and starts yelling at her to spare a thought for her butlers too. Other butlers try to calm him down, but he keeps screaming at her. The next day, Makoto suddenly faints in the classroom. The doctor diagnoses Makoto with a cold and recommends isolation and rest for a while. He assures Satotome and everyone that the cold has nothing to do with the death game. Someone probably gave him the virus. Tuju and a butler leave the room to see all the students waiting for Makoto. Tuju tells them that he will be fine in a few days. Yumi offers to take care of him while he rests, but Tuju cuts him off, declaring that they will take care of him. They will employ any means to eradicate the virus, so it does not spread throughout the school. The students turn out and comment on them being nice to the point that students sometimes forget that it is a death game. Sayotome brings wet towels to Makoto's room even if she is asked to leave him alone for a few days. She opens the door and sees Makoto doing push-ups. She makes her way towards him and asks him what he is doing when he is supposed to be resting. He replies that the games have been getting more physical recently so he needs to become stronger. Sayotome yells that he has to sleep. She scolds him for doing push-ups. When his body is in such fragile condition, Makoto is speechless seeing Sadome speak so loud. He plops back on the bed, still in shock, and says okay to her. She tells him to take off his shirt so she can wipe off his sweat. He does as told, and Satomi cleans him meticulously. Makoto notes that she is surprisingly good at doing this. She thinks back to caring for sick Tuju when she was a child. She tells Makoto that in the past, someone like a brother figure to her had caught a cold, so she has experience with it. She complains about that person always overdoing it and not caring for himself. Suddenly, Makoto's stomach grumbles, interrupting Satomi's talk. He becomes embarrassed and apologizes to her. She gets a little flustered and tells him that it is okay. She nervously offers him the porridge she made. 
Her face is all red, and she does not make eye contact with Makoto while talking. Makoto replies that he will take it and heats up the bowl of porridge. Sawatomi tells him not to expect much since she made it in an unfamiliar kitchen. Makoto takes a bite and comments that it is delicious. Satome feels like fainting because of the compliment, but she maintains her calm and instead brags about herself instead. Makoto finishes the bowl in a flash and it makes Sayotome really happy. She takes the bowl from his hand and grins. Makoto instantly falls on the bed after that. Satomi gets worried and checks on him immediately. She heaves a sigh of relief after seeing that he is just asleep. He instantly fell asleep after he was full. She hears him muttering, gotta get stronger in his sleep. She pats his head and says that he is plenty strong already, so there is no need to push himself hard. Tuju is watching the news at night. The newscaster talks about a burglar who stole some jewelry and ran off before he could get caught. Tuju notices that the crime scene is near to the school they are living in currently. The newscaster advises people to lock their doors and stay away from deserted areas. As Tuju watches the TV, a creepy man roams in the hallway outside. The students have been assured a high standard of living. They can use the specially built large bathhouse at designated times. All the female students are hanging around in the bathhouse. Satomi is wearing glasses. Chihiro proposes washing her back. She says that she can do it herself, but Chihiro starts doing it anyway. Satomi laughs because of the tickling by Chihiro on her back. Meanwhile, in the hallway, the escaped burglar is loitering around. He himself does not know where he has come to. He had thought this place would be good for hiding since it seems abandoned, but he has second thoughts when he notices signs of reconstruction. He decides to just deal with whoever gets in his way. He passes by a butler on the way and points his weapon towards him. The butler easily dodges his attack, and the criminal pulls back. After realizing that the guy is strong, he makes a run for it. The butler immediately calls Tuju and informs him about the situation. Tuju issues an order to catch him before any of the students get hurt. After the bath, Chihiro and Sayotome are in the changing room. Sayotome cannot seem to find her hair clip. Chihiro offers to help in looking for it, but Sayotome assures her that she will be able to do it alone, so Chihiro should head back first. Chihiro complies and leaves the room, saying that she will stop by Makoto's place on her way back. Omi is in Makoto's room to check on him. The isolation time is over, but Makoto still feels unwell. He is fast asleep, so Umi leaves a dating sim game for him as a gift. He looks around Makoto's luxurious room when an announcement is made through the speaker. It is announced that there is a suspicious person within the building, so the students are advised to go into their rooms and lock them. The butlers are searching throughout the building for the criminal, so he has a hard time hiding himself. Not only did he fail his robbery, but he also made a huge mistake in choosing a hideout. The butlers are also Satome's elite guard, so when they get serious, they can find anyone in an instant. And it is not only humans who do the work, they have other means too. They leave an iron ball to chase the criminal. Tuju is controlling the ball and monitoring everything from the broadcast room. The criminal runs fast to avoid the ball, and just when he loses the ball, a flood of water engulfs him. The man does not understand what is happening. First, he was chased by weird dudes in suits, then an iron ball, and then subjected to water torture. This abandoned school makes no sense to him. He feels like he is in a death game. The criminal runs away from the water and goes into the locker room to hide. Sayotomi is there, just having found her hair clip. The man sees Sayotome and instantly pulls out his weapon to threaten her. Chihiro enters Makoto's room, screaming for Sao Tome. She asks Umi if Sao Tome is there yet, and Umi says no. She panics because she had not been in her room either. Umi asks her where was the last place she saw her, and she tells him that it was the locker room. Makoto is listening to the conversation from his bed. In the locker room, the criminal has a weapon pointed towards Saotome and asks her if she knows men in black. Satomi is so scared that her voice does not come out. Every dangerous situation till now had been staged by her and her butlers. But right now, the man in front of her is actually a menace. She is experiencing true fear. Her eyes are filled with tears, and she is shaking. The man comments that he had terrible luck today, but she is not half bad. 
He forcibly takes off the towel that covered her body. Saitomi cries, trying to cover her body with her arms. Suddenly, the man feels a powerful kick to his gut and gets sent flying across the room. It is Makoto who has kicked him. He picks up the towel from the ground and hands it to Sayotome. Sayotome cries after seeing him. She thinks back to all the times he has saved her now. Makoto staggers a little and Sayotome holds him asking if he is all right. She notices that he is still burning up and scolds him for being reckless. Mr. the criminal gets up from the floor and threatens to take their lives. Sato Mum punches him and he falls back with a thud. Makoto's eyes go wide at the scene in front of him. Sayatome repeatedly punches the criminal and rebukes him for wanting to hurt Makoto when he is in pain already. She firmly declares that she will not always be the one to get protected. This time, she will be the one protecting Makoto. Her words surprise Makoto. Shihiro enters the room and notes that Saotome is still in a towel. She punches Umi and tells him to get back outside. The criminal gets captured by the men in black and they bring him to the police. After dressing up and being done with everything, Sayotome properly thanks Makoto for saving her. She says that she was terrified, so it made her happy. Switching her mood instantly, she reprimands him again for acting recklessly and thinking he can do everything by himself. Makoto smiles and asks Satome if she will save him again if he gets in trouble next time. Satome unwaveringly replies that she will always be there for him. Shifting the topic, Makoto asks her about the glasses. She answers that she normally wears contacts since her eyesight is bad. Two days later, Makoto makes a complete recovery. The butlers, watching him from the broadcast room, decide to hold a game soon. Tuju suggests going with the world's most fun death game and the other butlers smirk. For some reason, all the students find themselves in a fantasy world when they wake up. The students are confused about what is happening to them. The men in black sent messages to the students explaining the game. Actually, they are all in the world of an online video game. Makoto, being old-fashioned, does not even know how that works. He thinks of several ways and yells, asking what that even means. Umi explains to him that this is not the real world. He demonstrates it by asking Makoto to pinch his cheeks. He does not feel any pain because this is virtual reality. Yumi guesses that they probably got drugged after dinner and brought into the game. Only their consciousness is inside the game and their bodies are still in the real world. All students are lying on the ground unconscious, wearing VR headsets. This is a multiplayer online role-playing game that you can experience in virtual reality. By putting on the VR headsets, one can connect to the game world. Chihiro is excitedly looking at stuff and roaming around. Yumi blabbers about the game, and Chihiro calls him gross for that. The announcement by the game admins continues. The students are told that they have to defeat the Dark Lord of this land in half a day. If they fail to do so, their headsets would emit special electromagnetic waves, ending their lives. In the broadcast room, the butlers thank the game owner for allowing them to use his unannounced game. He says that he had to do it because it was a request from the Sadomi family. Also, the data collected would be helpful to them. Toju comments that half a day would be pretty tight for the students. The game owner replies that they have an abridged for test purposes and there are bona fide gamers playing the game, so they should be able to clear it. The students seem to be advancing without any issues, but the game owner suddenly notices a problem. Sayotomi is not there. Makoto does not see Sayotome anywhere around him. When all the students are supposed to be there, he asks from students nearby, but none of them have seen her. Chihiro and Yumi reassure him that they will run into her soon, so they should perform the task. Everyone forms different parties and sets off to defeat the Dark Lord. However, so Atome is nowhere to be seen. The mere purpose of this game is to bring Sarotome and Makoto closer. Sotome's plan is to party up and deepen those bonds you cannot really make in reality by overcoming adversity. Also, the costumes are adorable, so currently she is nowhere to be seen with Makoto. So this is already a big blow to her plan. The reason why Makoto cannot find her is because, thanks to a bug in the game, she has become the Dark Lord. She is speechless, finding herself in a place like this. Fixing bugs that emerge is an integral part of game design. If the bugs are left alone, the character can end up clipping through walls or walking on air. The students are playing the game Pride Forest. 
This game is not released yet and has been in the works for two years. However, the developers have been slacking on the day bugging. As a result, a game player, Saatome, has been appointed as the final boss, the Dark Lord. The butlers and the game owner go into a panic. The game owner does not know what has caused the bug, so it will be hard to figure out. Half a day will be too short for both the students and him. Satomi, sitting on the Dark Lord's throne, wonders how did this happen. In order to meet up with Makoto, she tries getting up from the throne, but she fails in that. It is because the Dark Lord is a non-playable character. Therefore, it will remain on standby till its battle with the players. Saotome gets worried, thinking she cannot do anything when a status screen appears before her. Her skills are mentioned there and she taps the devil slash button. A black slash gets charged and explodes on the opposite wall, leaving a mark. She smiles, realizing that she has superhuman powers. Another button brings out a huge hand. Sitomi starts having fun, playing with her skills. She notices a skill named Devil Gate and clicks on it. A real-time video of Makoto plays in front of her. She beams, realizing that it is showing her what she wants to see. She wonders if she can use the skill to peek at Makoto in the bath. In the video, she sees a female player scolding her partner for being weak and getting attacked. The boy is sitting on the ground with one of his knees petrified. The girl sighs and commands heal, which instantly heals the boy's knee. She smiles and says that they have to support each other so, in times like this, he can count on her. The boy thanks her and Yumi and Makoto approach them. Yumi calls them Kuroki and Koto and asks if they are a sage and an archer, and they reply yes. Makoto tells them that he and Chihiro are attackers and they only have one mage, Umi, on their team. He invites the two of them to party with them because one mage as a support is not enough. Kuroki and Koto agree to go with them. Siatome sees all of this from her throne and gets jealous. They all seem to be having a real journey. Meanwhile, she has to sit there alone, entertaining herself. She wants to be with them too. Suddenly, some weird-looking demons and a slime appear before her. They are crouching on the ground with their heads bowed down. One of them speaks and refers to Satome as your majesty. He comments that she seems unwell. Satomi comprehends that they are her underlings and must make them believe that she is the Dark Lord. She speaks in weird wording that she does not want to spread the cold, so she would like to be alone. The demons look blankly at her for a few moments before turning back, saying that it is unfortunate. Satomi thinks that she has fooled them, but they start whispering to themselves. One of them says that if she is not feeling well, then she cannot fight which means this is a chance for them to overthrow the throne. They look menacingly at Sayotome and she gets startled. She is surprised to see the sudden change in Demon's behaviors. One of them yells that he will be the next lord and orders the slime to keep her restrained. The slime turns into ropes and binds Satomi. The slime wraps around Satomi's body, suffocating her. Satome remembers that she has her own powers and uses Devil Slash on the demons. The demons retract, saying that they were just joking, but Satomi is furious and attacks them repeatedly. The demons apologize to her after getting beaten. Sayatome tells them to be thankful for her mercy, because any other lord would have eliminated traitors. The demons mock the use of the word mercy when she beat them to a pulp. She asks them why they tried to usurp her throne. They tell her that the human adventurers are assailing the demon army on all fronts, and the war is turning for the worse. Sarumi notes that Makoto and the others are doing a good job. And this is a game. The humans are obviously going to win. The demons continue that seeing the situation get worsen. They had thought it was time for a new lord. They are short on replies and might not survive the winter. Saro team takes off her cloak and rips it into pieces to give them. She tells them to use it to make clothes. The demons panic, seeing her destroy the cloak that has been passed through generations. They ask her if she can still call her the Dark Lord after tattering the cloak. Satome replies that it is just a piece of cloth and the demons' bodies are far more important. She knows that those guys are destined to lose, but as the Dark Lord, she should try to help them. She requests them to let her give them support as their Lord. Seeing her kindness, the demons accept the cloak happily and Satone laughs at their shenanigans. Makoto's party faces a strong monster. Kuroki tells Koto to stay back while she protects him. Makoto launches a finishing attack to the monster, and it gets defeated. However, the cave they are at starts collapsing. Makoto, Yun, and Chihiro get out in time. A large rock is about to fall on Kuroki when Koto holds her and gets out of the way. 
until the cave crashes behind them. Makoto and others praise Koto for his cool move. Kuroki is flustered at the action and Koto assures her that even though he might not seem dependable, they are still allies, so he will protect her. Kuroki blushes and gets up, taking Koto's hand. The suspension bridge effect Sayotome is obsessed with kicks in for someone else. For six hours, the students have made steady progress towards the Dark Lord's castle. Makoto and his party finally reach the castle. He is about to challenge the Dark Lord to a duel when he notices who is sitting on the throne. As Makoto and his friends are shocked to see Satome as the Dark Lord. However, the rules are still the game. They will have to defeat her to clear the game. Tuju says that she has no choice but to lose here. This game was a failure, so she should hurry back and move on to the next game. Yumi states that Saotomi being the villain makes things easy. She can just lose on purpose. It might be an anticlimactic ending, but there is no reason to fight. Makoto agrees with this and tells Sayotomi to stay at her place so he can end this. However, Sayotomi has other ideas. She uses Devil Slash on him, and he barely manages to dodge. Makoto screams at her, asking why she did that. She gets up from her throne and says that she knows she will lose no matter how much power she uses. This game is designed so the Dark Lord does not win, but she still does not want to give up. She declares that she will fight them and yells, Come at me! Humans, everyone's jaws drop at the declaration. As a born and raised member of the Sayotome family, she knows that many people have supported her along the way. This is why she does not want to give up on those demons. She shouts that she cannot just abandon those kids and launches another attack. This time, the slash passes between Umi and Shihiro. Shihiro says that if Satomi is serious, she will fight for real too. Umi asks Makoto to convince Satome to stop, but he says the same thing as Chihiro. He calls them berserkers for loving fights too much. Satome punches with a big hand this time, but Yumi stops it. He was not on board with the idea before, but now he is willing to help. He tells Makoto to finish the fight in one hit, since the opponent is still a friend. Makoto says that is the plan and dashes towards Satome. She hurriedly launches another attack, but Makoto charges an attack of his own. The clash creates a lot of noise and destruction. Sayotome gets defeated in just one hit and the game is cleared. Satome registers that she has lost. She knew that she could never win, but she still acted foolish. She does not know what she is doing. Makoto asks her if she had a reason to fight. He does not know what it was, but her face told him that she was fighting to protect something. He applauds her for fighting on her own and offers her a hand to help her stand up. The giving praise despite being enemies theory kicks in here. Like delinquents who become friends after a fight and become more than just travel partners, their bonds have deepened. Imi cries and the students wake up in reality. Satome apologizes to Makoto for troubling him in the game with a slight blush on her face. Makoto tells her not to worry about it. Kuroki and Koto wake up too. They remember the events of the game and glance at each other nervously. There were no casualties in this game. However, a new love has sprouted. Kiroki Hiroka fell in love with Tanaka Koto during the last game. She wants to give him some cookies as a thanks for fighting alongside her and saving her, but she is hopeless in this case. The cookies she has made look awful. She wonders if she will ever be able to make them decent by herself. Satome passes by the kitchen and stops when she sees Kuroki. She notices the baking ingredients and utensils on the kitchen counter and asks if Kuroki would like some help. Satome puts on an apron and Kuroki asks her if she knows how to make cookies. Satome replies that she basically knows how to make everything. Kuroki says that she is surprised to see that Satome has the heart to rescue someone needing help. She also calls her rampage as the Dark Lord cringe. Satome admits that she has never paid much attention to people. But recently, she has met people she can call friends, so she has realized that she cannot stay away from people. Kuroki pokes fun at her for being alone till now. She adds that in school, Satome has always been like a rich girl who silently screamed to look at her. Satome feels embarrassed hearing all that about her. Kuroki says that despite all that, she still thinks that Satome is easy to talk to. She asks Sayotome to hold the responsibility of guiding her to make cookies since she is hopeless in this case. They both get to work and start mixing the ingredients. Sayotome guides her on every step. She suddenly asks who she is making cookies for. Kuroki jumps at the question and says that she is not going to tell her. 
Satomi recognizes the look on her face. As a love expert, she can easily tell that Kuroki is in love. Satomi threatens that she will not help if Kuroki does not tell her who it is. She asks her all kinds of questions like how it started, when she realized it was love, etc. Kuroki gives in and mutters the name quietly. Kuroki takes Koto's name but Saotome does not hear her voice properly and assumes that she said Makoto's name. She gets shocked at first, but then it starts making sense to her because Makoto is the coolest guy in the school and no one comes close to him. With this, the girl whom she is supposed to be helping has become her love rival. So she comes up with a plan and tries to ruin the cookies Kuroki is making. She suggests adding some dried horse mackerel to the cookie dough. Kuroki has second thoughts about it and asks if adding something like this will make it tasty. Satome answers that it is a matter of course in Italy, so it would be fine. Kuroki still has her doubts, but Satome says that there is nothing to worry about. The next ingredient she adds is durian. Kuroki protests, saying that it stinks and they should not add such a lethal weapon to cookies. Satomi reassures her that it is a matter of France and adds it anyway. And then she finally adds surstroming, the world's smelliest food. Kuroki screams that Satome is just trying to mess with her. Sayotomi says that it is a matter of course in Turkey, but Kuroki does not buy it. Saying that the thing Satome prepares looks unflattering would be an understatement. Kuroki comments that it is a violation of the Poisonous Substances Control Act. While she screams at Saotome, Koto enters the kitchen. He asks Kuroki what is going on here because it is stinking bad. Saotome sees Kuroki's reaction to Koto's appearances and realizes that the one she is in love with is not Makoto, but it is Koto. She heaves a sigh of relief because now she does not have to worry about a love rival, but it immediately registers to him that she has created an abomination in the name of cookies. She tries to think of ways to hide it, but it will be useless since the smell would give it away. She cannot think of any other way, so she eats the whole plate in one go while Kuroki and Koto are conversing. Kuroki is surprised to see that the dish has disappeared. Koto's eyes fall on the cookies Kuroki had made previously. He asks her if those are the cookies she made. Kuroki tells him that those are the rejects she made. Koto asks if he can eat those and Kuroki replies that they are awful and she will make some more later. But Koto does not listen and eats them anyway. Kuroki is nervous while he eats, but Koto comments that they are good. She cannot believe that and asks if he is lying to her. He reassures her that they taste better than they look. Saotome smiles at the good ending. Also, she now has a friend with whom she can discuss love with. Saotome arrives at the broadcast room and faints right away. The butlers go into a panic, wondering what has happened to her. It is also stinking like hell, so they want to know what Saotome did. As the admins have said, a healthy game starts with a healthy body. So, considering the stress of the game and involuntary confinement, a special plan was commissioned. A pool opened for everyone. Tuju is hosting a yakisoba stall and also selling swimsuits. A student orders a yakisoba and his friend asks Tuju if he is really a bad guy. Tuju replies that he is one of the death games, so the students better watch themselves. Chihiro calls for Sao Tome to play with her in the pool and Sao Tome says sure. Chihiro throws a ball at Yumi's face, hitting him hard. He falls into the pool and Sao Tome asks if he is okay, referring to him as Anuu which means flame. Umi says that if she is going to call her by the wrong name, at least say a water-related name. Makoto suggests training a little since they have games ahead. Sayotomi happily complies and takes a throwing stance with a ball in her hand. Kuroki is walking around the pool, watching people. Most of the girls at the pool have big chests, while Kuroki has a flat one. She feels a little insecure. She spots Koto nearby and approaches him. Koto is covering his eyes and tells her not to come any closer. Kuroki gets saddened, wondering if he hates her. However, Ko nervously tells her that with her wearing a swimsuit, he does not know where to look. Kuroki smirks at his answer and gets near him, calling him a pervert. Koto tries to defend himself, but Kuroki keeps teasing him. She holds his arm and heads towards Saitumi to join her. Everyone has left the pool, as it has gotten dark. Chihiro suggests heading back too, 
and Yumi and Makoto agree with her. Both Umi and Chihiro leave, but Makoto notices that Saotome is still inside the pool, with a ball in her hands. He asks her if she will leave, and she replies that she still wants to play. Makoto says that everyone has left, so they will play another time. Tuju is witnessing the scene and it gives him an idea. He orders Makoto and Satomi to drain the pool. Makoto asks why they have to do that and Tuju brings out a weapon, threatening him. He informs them about the keys to the pool and tells them to stay until all the water is drained. His idea finally clicks in Satomi's head and she pretends to be sad for having to stay behind to drain the pool. She fake complains to Tuju about giving them odd jobs and he leaves. Saotim asks Makoto if they can have some fun themselves since they have to stay here anyway. She has an enticing look on her face and Makoto falls right into her trap. Makoto has kept his emotions hidden ever since he was a kid. No matter the situation, he always remains calm. His physical abilities have made him an accomplished martial artist. Even during the games, he never panicked and got over every hurdle using his capabilities. However, lately, there are times when his heart does not stay calm, especially when they involve Saotome. Getting in the pool, Makoto comments that Sayotome has become a lot more expressive. He says that the old Saotome would have never admitted that she wanted to play more. Satatome gets flustered and calls him a meanie for teasing her. He clarifies that this was not his intention and he was just pointing out a fact. Shifting the topic, Sayotome asks him when was the last time he smiled. The question confuses Makoto, and Sayotome explains that he does not smile much and always has his eyebrows furrowed. She cutely tries to imitate him and points towards her eyebrows. Makoto makes the exact same face she was talking about. Sayotomi continues that she has only discovered how it feels to enjoy something after playing with Makoto and his friends. She has a heartwarming smile on her face while she opens up to Makoto. She collects some water in her hands and splashes it on his face, telling him to have fun too. Makoto is surprised at first but then goes along with the flow and starts playing with her. He genuinely enjoys his time with Sayotome and Beams the entire time. Makoto gets back late after playing with Satomi and draining the pool. He runs into Yumi on the way and Yumi comments on him being late. Makoto scratches his face nervously and says that something happened. Yumi gets the hint and says goodbye to him, not asking for further details. Makoto stops Yumi as he is about to head back to his room. He asks if he has seemed weird lately. He explains that lately his heart won't stop pounding and his mouth naturally curls up, forming a smile, and his mind feels like a mess. This is not like his usual self. Umi replies that maybe it is a cold, but Makoto denies it, saying he is perfectly fit. Yumi thinks for a moment and says that perhaps it is love sickness. He immediately Immediately clarifies that he is joking but Makoto's face has gone blank. Makoto thinks of Sayotome and blushes instantly. Umi notes that his joke is actually true. Makoto is actually in love. Umi asks who is the lucky lady to be loved by Makoto. Makoto says that he is not going to tell him, hiding his face in his hand. Umi notes that Makoto has at least accepted the love part. He asks if the girl is Satome. Makoto jolts and asks how he got to know this. Ome gets excited and tells him that it is obvious because they both have gotten close recently. He joyfully yells about Makoto being in love with Satome and dances as a celebration. Makoto tells him to keep quiet, but he does not listen. He says that they need to have a strategy meeting with someone who understands women and recommends getting Chihiro when he receives several punches to his head. Makoto scolds him for being too loud. Umi counters that it was just a joke, but Makoto still beat him up. He asks Makoto what started it, because he is being too serious for someone who never thought about love. Makoto thinks back to all the games and tells Umai about the iron ball game, which was the first heart-stirring moment. Then he talks about the time they disarmed a bomb and when she clung to him while running away from the tiger. Ame comments that it sounds like the suspension bridge effect and it does not have to be love. It just means that girls excite him. Makoto threatens him with another beating and explains that the games only help them get closer. But there have been other times too when he felt his heart beating. He gives the example of just the two of them playing in the cool. He wants to get to know Sayotome outside of games. When he sees Sayotome smile, his heart just won't settle down. He makes a weird face while explaining this all to Umi. So Umi starts taking him seriously. He asks Makoto if he would like to go out with her. Makoto asks if going out means sparring together. Umi looks at him hopelessly and tries to tell him in code words, but Makoto stares at him blankly. Giving up, he tells him about holding hands, 
going to different places to have fun, and, of course, kissing. Makoto's face goes dark at the mention of kissing, and he screams that he cannot do that. He is still in high school and does not want to break the law. Omi screams back at him that kissing is not against the law. He advises Makoto to imagine if he would like to do all those things with Sao Tome. Makoto does so, and it gives him a warm and fuzzy feeling. He contemplates what to say to Yumi for a few moments and ends up saying that he does, hiding his face. He asks Umi for advice on what to do now, since this is his first time feeling like this. Umi suggests getting closer to her now. Otherwise, if he confessed, he could get rejected at once. While Umi speaks, Makoto realizes something. He says that he has been a fool not to realize it earlier. Even he knows what to do when there is a person you like. He declares that now that he has come this far, he will confess to her right now. Omi is puzzled at first, but when Makoto's words register in his mind, he goes crazy. Makoto turns around to leave, and Yumi grabs his shoulder, yelling to listen to him. Makoto does not listen to him and keeps saying that he will confess right now. Umi says that rushing will not do anything because he has a super low chance of success as of now. Makoto howls that he will regret not doing it later and flees. Yumi tries to follow him, but he is too fast for him. That is just how Makoto is. Despite being in a death game and having a weapon pointed at his face, he continues to follow his chosen path. He has the courage to overcome his fear truly. He finally reaches Saotome's room and knocks on her door. Saotome's room is the art room. In order to not rouse suspicions, this room is connected to the broadcast room through an elevator from inside. This is where Saotome spends most of her time. Saotome is looking through an album of Makoto's photos and admiring him. The album has photos of his many random moments and Satome finds all of them cool. According to her, he is the only person in history with no uncool moments. He is cool even when he sneezes and when everyone laughs at him for farting. Sadotome is rolling around in her bed, thinking of him. She hears a knock on the door suddenly and goes to check it. She thinks it is Tushu bothering her for something at night, but when she sees Makoto on the door, she immediately slams it back. She nervously asks him if this is an illusion or he is actually there. Makoto responds that it is reality. She asks him to wait for a few seconds before she opens the door again, looking fresh and clean. From the outside, she looks like her usual self, but inside she is freaking out. Her hair is messed up from behind because she could only make herself presentable from the front in such a short time. Makoto says that he has to tell her something. Sadatome tells him to keep the conversation short since she is tired. In reality, she just does not want Makoto to see her so disheveled. Makoto wants to confess to her. Meanwhile, she wants Makoto to, to leave. Sayatome invites him inside because he is a guest, and she cannot just outright refuse him. She just hopes that he leaves before getting to see the back of her head. She mentally thanks Tuju for coming earlier and cleaning her room forcefully, even if she was annoyed, because this saved her from humiliation in front of Makoto. She is so immersed in hiding her back from Makoto that the implications of Makoto being in her room just hit her. She suddenly gets nervous, thinking what she should do. She decides she should show him some hospitality, so he goes to bring him some tea. She turns around and immediately remembers about her back, so she flips back around to face Makoto. She walks backward awkwardly and shuffles through the fridge to get a bottle out. She offers it to Makoto, and he asks her why she did that while facing him, and she gives him a dumb excuse. Getting to the point, she is about to ask him why he is here when she notices her brassiere lying on a chair. She panics and starts thinking of ways to prevent him from seeing it. It is pretty big and Makoto will easily see it if he turns out. So the only way is to retrieve it. She cannot retrieve it normally or even by acting fast because Makoto's eyes would catch her. Her only option is to faint to the right and flee to the left to retrieve it. She gets ready to execute her plan. Meanwhile, Makoto is only thinking about confessing to her. He is nervous, but he has to confess in order for things to change. He tries to read her body language but fails because she is squatting like an American footballer. He decides to say it now and opens his mouth when Satome finds an opening for herself and in haste to run, 
trips over her feet. She falls on Makoto and gets pushed onto the bed alongside him. Makoto hovers over Satomi with her looking flushed. She apologizes to him for tripping over her foot and pulling him to the bed with her. Makoto asks her if she is hurt and Satomi notices his expression. They had been in this position several times before, but Makoto had not felt anything in those situations. But now, he is in love with Satomi, so his experience is totally different. His heart is thumping hard and his face is blushing. Even Sato notices that something is different. Makoto opens his mouth to confess to her. 